Back on Super Bowl Live 1956 when that historic sign went up and it still welcomes people to fabulous Las Vegas, the site of Super Bowl 58 on Sunday. These are the youngest quarterbacks to start four Super Bowls. Tom Brady, Terry Bradshaw, Patrick Mahomes doing it at 28 years old. And of course, Joe Montana, number four for Patrick Mahomes. Joe Montana never lost a Super Bowl. Mahomes can't match that. We're joined now by the one and only Hall of Fame quarterback, Joe Montana, on behalf of Pfizer. Uh, Joe, what advice have you given to Brock Purdy ahead of the biggest game of his life? Uh, he doesn't need any advice. He just needs to go out there and be himself. I mean, he's, he, I think there was a little stretch there. I'm not sure he was really healthy out there. A little bit of that, that concussion thing that happened. Um, struggled a little bit, and then all of a sudden it kicked back in again. And, the, you know, he's been playing well again towards the end of the season. And, hey, he, he's having a great, um, a great season. Just, it's the Super Bowl, I understand. But once you get in the flow of the game, he just has to be himself. Joe, how, how important was routine to you, and how disrupted is the routine when you're when you're getting ready to play in a Super Bowl? It gets really disruptive here. Once they get here, um, I was lucky. Uh, Jennifer handled all this for me. <laughs> is when you get down here, the family comes like either today or tomorrow, whenever, and then everything all oh, hell breaks loose. I don't like my room. I don't like my tickets. Can you get me tickets here? I want to eat here. <laughs> and so Jennifer just took care of all those things and uh, made it easy. But I didn't really have a routine. I, I, I used to go on the last bus until our bus got stopped in the first Super Bowl uh, because the, the vice president was coming into the game. And we were sitting there with like 20 minutes to go and oh, we hadn't needed to be on the field. And so um, uh, once that happened, I never went. I get up in the morning go get some uh, early breakfast training table, jump in a taxi and go to the stadium. You knew it was a night game. <laughs> Looking back at history, of okay. course, uh, playing under Bill Walsh, an offensive mastermind, Kyle Shanahan, uh, gets similarly discussed here. Any similarities that you see between the two? Well, I, I, I think Kyle has the same kind of, I would say, calmness and uh, about him on the sideline, if you watch, not a lot of things. Yeah, Bill would get upset too, but on a rare occasion, um, he's constantly thinking about what's going to happen the next time they get the ball. And uh, you know, my hats off to him from the, for especially from the last game. I mean, you know, having to make decisions on and changes on both sides of that ball, and um, the way they came back from to win that game. Uh, I know it's tough to do in that in in the championship game, but playing a little good team, and but they sh ended up shutting down that run, which was killing them in the beginning. And um, offensively, they just kind of got back to what the simple things, and and then it all just started the momentum. Momentum is a crazy thing. Once it flips, it is really hard to stop, and that's what happened for them. They got in a they got in a good spot, came out, went down, scored, that helped get a little uh, push to the defense. And that thing switched, and then there was no getting back to it. I think, and then what usually happens, too, is the other team starts to go, let's try not to lose instead of let's just play like we were doing. And so they start doing things different, which helps that momentum switch. Joe, when you look at both these teams, you know, they have guys they want to get involved in the plan. How, how, going back to your Super Bowls, what was in the, in the script, the first 15, or what was the, the, the thought process, but, but, you know, trying to get your big guys involved uh, right from the jump? I don't, I don't really re recall that we would ever try to aim to get somebody involved in the game, but Bill always had a plan. He, he played the game in his mind, and so what he was telling us is he goes, if the game goes exactly like I would want it to go, these are the plays and how, and that you're going to see in that first uh, part of the first half of the game. And so you were ready for them. You knew whether they were coming because, you just you know, you can try to get Jerry Rice involved, but, hey, they come out and double-team Jerry Rice, so what, what are you going to do? So mm -hmm. his approach was always to keep pressure, pressure, pressure. He goes, I don't care. First down, I just want completion. I want to keep pressure on, those, uh, on, on the defense. You know, we want to keep the other team off the field, but we want to do the things that we do best. And then those things will appear, and they'll jump up in front of you when you have an opportunity. And so I, I think he was more on the attack side of it and didn't really care who got the ball, um, although – as the game goes on and somebody's having a good game like Jerry in the, in the <laughs> Super Bowl against 
Uh, the Bengals, you, you want to you get the ball to them. Uh, Joe, you mentioned the momentum switching and things kind of not going your way. Uh, what was the key for you guys when things weren't going your way? You had these postseason come from behind uh, wins against the Lions and the Cowboys. What's, what's the thing uh, that did not cause the things going bad to steamroll and snowball and uh, cause yeah. you to lose? <clears throat> well, one, yeah, one of the things we noticed, I think, is Bill... A lot of times when you play a team a, a bunch of time or twice a year in your division, like the Saints, I mean, we were losing to the Saints 35 to three late in the third quarter. And Bill called it up and said, look, guys, I, I don't, I, he doesn't want to try to go for the deep pass. We got to score now, score now. He goes backwards. It goes the other way. So he goes, I, I just want to come out of here going like this. So we're going to go back to our fundamental defense and our fundamental offense. And that's all I want to do. Well, we end up winning 38-35. By not trying new stuff, you got to go back to your fundamentals when you start struggling and do the things you do well. Uh, serious question from me, uh, my last one here, Joe. Everybody, you've heard the joke, the, the John Candy uh, story a million times. I know you get asked that question every time. So I'm going to go take John Candy off the table. Uh, favorite comedic actor during the 80s, and we have Aykroyd. Uh, we've got Chevy Chase. I'm going to leave Bill Murray. They're all out there for you to take. Who are we taking? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I love Bill Murray. Uh, there we go. There was just something about him. Just looking at him make you laugh. Uh, <laughs> it's just that, that he had that face and that look. It. it uh, I mean, I love. I love comedy, and 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 a lot of those guys um, were very prevalent during my time of playing. But Bill Murray is pretty fun. There you go. Uh, Joe, Good answer. Uh, of course, you've you had all the the Super Bowl success. We've been fortunate enough to talk to you in multiple Super Bowls. First time for Las Vegas. Uh, the play host. How do you feel Vegas is doing this year? Well, I think they're doing great. Um, I mean, just so far getting around, I don't know, maybe Friday and Saturday going to be a little bit different when there's a lot more people here, but uh, the strip can be crowded anyway, and it's crazy out, <coughs> out there to begin with. <coughs> so, <coughs> so far so good. They're doing a good job. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing uh, how things turn out this week. And tell us about the work you're doing with Pfizer this week. Yeah, I've teamed up with Pfizer, and we're just trying to get the word out and, uh, for people to be cautious about this serious lung disease called pneumococcal pneumonia. And so, like people like for me, 65 and older, um, you become more at risk. And so, vaccination can help uh, deal with that and help prevent. And also, younger people who have underlying conditions like uh, asthma and diabetes also become more at risk. And so, um, we're saying that if you if you do, if you like, we'll know more about it, go to knowpneumonia.com. That's K-N-O-W, pneumonia. And you'll have a lot of great information on there. And like I said, uh, I'm talking about the vaccination, being able to help with uh, prevent this. Absolutely. Joe, thank you so much for joining us here on Super Bowl Live. Enjoy the rest of your week and hopefully navigating uh, Las Vegas as you get closer to the game. Doesn't get uh, too dicey <laughs> out there, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. One of the best to ever do it, Joe Montana.